Hello viewers. So as you would remember in, in this series we are talking about uh, different, uh, different theories of error as uh, propounded uh, in different uh, schools of thought in Indian philosophy. But in before uh, we begin, uh, we before we uh, go ahead further with our discussion, let's uh, let's you know have a kind of uh, quick uh, recapitulation of what we have discussed earlier, and even before that, let's uh, kind of. Uh, 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 contextualize our our, uh, our lecture, uh, and you know, let's talk about. Uh, I mean, why why the discussion of uh, you know uh, why discussions on error, a proper philosophical analysis of why errors occur at all. Is is important? Is important. So basically, I mean, we should we should, we must understand what is the philosophical importance of uh, theorizing errors uh, in the first place. So, uh, in order to understand that, uh, you know, you must understand that uh, as far as uh, uh, classical Indian philosophy is concerned, there is a famous uh, uh, dictum that is uh, generally sort of used for the overall, uh, you know, purposive nature of, of uh, philosophizing as, as uh, it is viewed, uh, especially you know, in the context of, uh, of, uh, of classical Indian philosophy. So, you know, it is famously said, uh, you know, with regard to classical Indian philosophy, sa vidya ya vimuktai. Uh, which means uh, knowledge is that which liberates. So uh, you know, if if we if we uh, kind of uh, try to look at uh, this this uh, this overall uh, uh, sort of uh, you know uh, the way you know the purpose of philosophizing is defined in classical Indian philosophy, we will find that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the idea behind it is that, uh, you know, you philosophize, uh, you engage in philosophical thinking, you engage in the pursuit of philosophy uh, for a particular reason. So, you know, it is not a kind of reasoning just for the sake of reasoning. Uh, here, uh, you know, in the context of uh, classical Indian philosophy, uh, you know, one philosophizes uh, for uh, you know so to speak the overall uh, betterment of of uh of lived experience, uh, overall uh, sort of you know betterment of uh, spiritual aspect of uh, one's life. So the ultimate aim of life is projected as uh, vimukti, or as you know some kind of uh, spiritual uh, liberation, uh, which uh, you know is defined uh, differently in uh, different schools. But uh, all the schools are uh, uh, probably uh, barring. Uh, uh, Charvakas uh, agree on this that uh, you know one philosophizes, uh, 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 you know one one engages in philosophical pursuit mainly for the purpose of uh, of uh, uh, getting uh, liberation, getting uh, uh, vimukti, getting moksha. There could be several words that we could uh, you know that have been used in Indian philosophy and that could be used. So uh, now, having uh, understood that, uh, you know, one would wonder why we are talking about, uh, uh, you know, soteriological nature of Indian philosophy uh, in the context of, in the context of uh, different theories of error. Now, uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, some kind of a liberation that presupposes some kind of strain of experience, uh, you know, some kind of a, some, some kind of, a, you know, some kind of, a, some kind of unliberated present state. So, you know, if you are looking for uh, some kind of spiritual liberation, uh, that in a certain way points towards some kind of unease in our present moment uh, of, of living, so to speak. That means, uh, you know, we seek happiness only when we are in a certain way not happy in our present state. So, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, represented, uh, you know, one could say very clearly, probably most clearly within Buddhist philosophy. So, you know, we could recall uh, four Buddhist uh, noble noble truths. So, first uh, noble truth is that there is there is pain in the world. So, uh, you know, the entire purpose of uh, philosophizing, uh, you know, as far as Buddhism is concerned, uh, the main purpose of, uh, of, 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 you know, the, the, I mean, the main, the main uh, sort of uh, point of inquiry, the main uh, point of beginning of inquiry 
is that uh, there is pain in the world and uh, you know pain is an undesirable state of uh, of living so pain is not something that one desires so therefore uh, you know but but at the same time pain must have a cause and uh, if caused is removed uh, then uh, you know then the, the, there must be a way that means we have uh, discovered a way of uh, removing pain so you know the overall uh, sort of thing to understand here is that uh, you philosophize only when uh, you have some kind of uh, you know you some kind of uh, strain that you experience in your uh, present uh, uh, you know lived experience and uh, you know that uh, that strain is an experience that uh, sort of some kind of uh, pain or unhappiness that one may feel in uh, one present you know in one's uh, sort of uh, uh, present experience one needs to look for the causes of it and uh, very often the causes are uh, you know in a certain way cognitive in nature in the sense that um, very often uh, you know the, the the pain would occur unhappiness would occur if uh, there is some issue there is some problem in the way uh, we have been trying to look at the world in the way uh, we have been uh, you know understanding uh, the world around us and so on that means uh, probably sort of uh, you know the, the, the uh, one of the foremost reason for uh, you know uh, our not being in a liberated state is that we think incorrectly uh, about uh, the world around us and if we are uh, you know if we we start thinking correctly which is tend to amount to uh, you know knowledge per se and not thinking correctly about the world you know would be stent amount to ignorance uh, so uh, you know if we correct our way of looking at the world if we uh, you know which also uh, would mean that if we have some way of correctly cognizing the objects in the world then probably it would lean it would lead you know it would pave a path for us uh, towards liberation so if we know the object of knowledge correctly if we know the object uh, you know in its uh, true nature then probably it could uh, you know it it could it could be helpful for us it could facilitate you know a, a kind of a state of living uh, you know where we would uh, be happier where would we, we you know where we might feel uh, you know more uh, liberated so to speak so uh, so you know in in order for you know in order for that to happen as stated uh, you know we must understand we must understand the nature of the world correctly we must understand the nature of uh, you know the object uh, correctly and uh, you know if if we if we if we uh, want to know the nature of the world correctly then uh, you know we must understand why does uh, you know why does uh, uh, why does uh, wrong cognition wrong seeing uh, wrong uh, so to speak uh, cognition of uh, the no of 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 a particular object happens at all how where does the error occur how does rather uh the error occur so that means if we have some good uh, understanding of the genesis of error if we have some good understanding of uh, why and how we happen to see uh, objects uh, you know in the world uh, uh, you know as uh, in a way uh, you know as they are not so if we know the mechanism if we know how uh, the genesis of uh, so to speak ignorance uh, uh, happens at all uh, then probably you know it, from from the point of view of uh, soteriology from the soteriological point of view it may be highly beneficial for us uh, so it ha- it would have uh, it would have uh, some kind of uh, sort of you know uh, i mean some kind of a paramount uh, uh, soteriological value so therefore 
uh, when we theorize errors, when we uh, you know inquire into uh, why errors uh, occur at all, when we inquire into uh, the reasons and causes for error, then you know in the same stroke we are also in the same line we are also uh, looking for reasons of uh, uh, invalid cognition reasons for uh, but you know invalid cognitions reasons for invalid cognition would also be reasons for ignorance and if we know uh, you know our reasons for uh, uh, agyana or uh, or or uh, you know reasons for wrong cognition then uh, you know there could be a way of correcting it there could be a way of correcting it and uh, once you know sort of uh, we make uh, so to speak uh, appropriate corrections in the way we look at the world we look at the objects then probably uh, it could uh, you know uh, it could lead to uh, possible removal of suffering it could lead to prop, uh, possible removal of uh, of uh, pain uh, as a matter of fact you know, this could also be understand, understood uh, you know through an analogy uh, uh, when we talk about Buddhism as is sort of uh, pointed out here that uh, problem this idea of uh, of removal of pain uh, and and you know sort of uh, some kind of a purposive nature of a philosophical inquiry uh, is probably is, uh, you know it comes out probably most clearly in in Buddhist philosophy because uh, you know they talk talk about four noble truths and uh, they talk about uh, they talk about the desirability of removal of pain. But in that context, you would remember that uh, Buddha is also, uh, uh, you know, likened to uh, a physician. Uh, you know, Buddha is thought of as, uh, as uh, so to speak, uh, a physician. And this uh, physician's job is basically to look for, uh, you know, the causes of a malady, the causes of, uh, you know, uh, the disease uh, that uh, one might have, uh, the disease you know that may be sort of causing pain, some kind of an unease uh, in 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 you know in the person concerned. So, what does a physician do uh, in order to in order to uh, you know uh, uh, in order to make uh, the overall condition of uh, you know the patient better? So, first and foremost, uh, task of a physician is uh, you know the correct diagnosis of the problem and uh, once we understand uh, you know what the problem is where does the problem lie uh, then you know we can understand the genesis of the problem and then you know once we understand the cause of the problem then probably we could remove it so re uh, to so to understand the root of the problem, the cause of the problem, uh, you know, is of uh, paramount importance before uh, we could take any step towards, uh, you know, the removal of the cause of the problem. So similarly, uh, you know, the 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 main uh, reason for uh, the main reason for uh, you know our, our sort of uh, uh, not being in a state of liberation uh, is is. Uh, considered to be uh, some kind of you know in sort of uh, is, is considered to be some, some kind of a wrong cognition of the world uh, we often miss uh, you know uh, to see a particular object uh, in its uh, true nature and uh, it must have it, it must have a reason and once we understand the reason, once we have a proper good theory, uh, you know, which explains the reasons for, uh, you know, such, uh, for, for the, re you know, which explains uh, the reasons for, uh, for wrong cognition of the object, then probably once we have, you know, that, that would mean once we have the diagnosis of why wrong cognition happens at all, then we would be in a position to take steps towards correcting it. And uh, only sort of, you know, uh, only sort of, one, uh, and only then, you know, once we correct our uh, sort of, uh, our, our ways of uh, trying to, you know, know the world, our ways of making efforts, to know the world, uh, you know, in a correct way, then that would be, uh, you know, way towards uh, removal of suffering. 
So, uh, it, this it is you know within this kind of a background that uh, we must try and understand the importance of uh, you know theorizing and and uh, you know uh, the theorizing the the uh, the theorizing uh, you know why uh, why errors uh, occur at all and this is the reason why there are several uh, theories uh, that have been proposed uh, regarding error in indian philosophy as a matter of fact uh, Almost uh, every school, even uh, sub schools, say for example, uh, you know, within Buddhism, there are several sub schools. So, even different sub schools have given their own. Uh, their own theory of error. So altogether, uh, you know, the, there are at least eight, uh, at least ten different theories of error that have been uh, uh, discussed in various different texts of Indian philosophy. And in today's lecture, our purpose would be to look at the broad way uh, we could classify different theories of error depending upon uh, you know what we focus on so if our focus is on uh, so to speak uh, the you know the, the very uh, underlying substance of of uh, you know of the thing cognized then probably you know we would uh, we would classify different uh, different types of erroneous cognition in, in you know in in in, in, in a different way and if our focus is on the psychological aspect, uh, on the aspect of psychosis uh, that happens, uh, you know, in an error, then probably, you know, our way of uh, of of uh, of uh, theorizing error uh, would be uh, different. So, say for example, you know, and, and also, you know, let's not forget that uh, errors are of uh, you know erroneous cognition have a different kind of uh, sort of uh, uh, anatomies, uh, so to speak. So, uh, there could be different kinds of erroneous cognition, say for example, you know, seeing uh, uh, a transparent crystal as, uh, as uh, say for example, red, because there is some kind of uh, red, uh, you know, object placed behind it is an error of a different kind. <coughs> What's happening in such situation is that uh, you know the crystal it does not have any color at all, but the thing that is placed behind it has a particular color, and that color appears as if it is an actual attribute of the crystal itself, and an attribute which does not belong to the crystal but belongs to an object other than the crystal is is projected uh, you know uh, the term for it is adhyarop in advaita philosophy is projected onto the crystal of which it is not the attribute so there could be you know errors of this kind uh, where the mere proximity of two objects uh, you know could could sort of lead to the attribute of one being projected onto the other uh, other examples are, uh, are uh, so you know, like in such cases, uh, the error would not go unless something is done about the objective condition. Unless you know this proximity between the crystal and uh, you know the red colored object is uh, you know some, some unless something is done about that unless you know that proximity is broken. Uh, uh, and you know the two objects are kept apart. Uh, this uh, kind of error wouldn't go because uh, you know there's nothing wrong, so to speak, uh, within our cognitive apparatus. But uh, the cause lies in the very proximity of the two objects. Whereas there could be another kind of error. Say, for example, you know, uh, seeing the conch shell, conch shell, which is. Uh, which is uh, in, uh, uh, in most of the cases uh, white in color. In most of the cases, those sort of uh, you know, like it, it sort of at times there are different there are certain species uh, which do not have white uh, you know shell. So, but but in in, in majority of the cases, ninety percent of the cases, the conch shell is always white. 
in color. But, uh, you know, if somebody has uh, sort of uh, jaundice and, uh, you know, there is, an ex uh, there is an excessive secretion of bile in one's body, then there is a tendency and, you know, that bile kind of gets uh, accumulated uh, within the eye also, then there is a tendency uh, in that kind of a person to see, uh, you know, to, to sort of uh, see the objects as yellow. So, the the, so the color which is actually influencing the very cognitive apparatus uh, gets projected onto the object. So in this condition there is absolutely nothing wrong with the presentation of the object concerned. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, uh, uh, which in this case is conch shell. So conch shell, uh, you know, is presenting itself uh, as it actually is. Uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's sort of it's, it's appearing before us. Uh, it's presenting itself before us uh, in its actual white color. But what's wrong uh, here is that uh, you know the, the the yellow bile which has accumulated in the retina of our eye uh, is being projected onto the conch shell. Now this kind of uh, you know uh, error cannot be corrected unless uh, you know we we do something about uh, you know the uh, restoring the balance of uh, bodily humors. So, unless uh, the balance of bodily humors is restored, uh, we wouldn't be able to see the objects correctly. So, uh, so you know the sort of uh, the uh, the objective uh, uh, aggregation of of things that is leading to a particular type of cognition. There is nothing wrong with it. What is wrong is in the subjective side of it. So, the, the cognitive apparatus is not in shape and something, you know, in that case would be requires to be done uh, uh, about that. So, this is, uh, you know, like these are some uh, examples, uh, you know, regarding how uh, there could be different types of error which require uh, different kind of sort of you know uh, different kind of uh, 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 remedies uh, uh, about them and uh, sort of you know before we talk about uh, different theories of error we must understand how we could classify different errors on the on such basis. Similarly, uh, you know, there could be different, there could be certain theories which, uh, you know, which would, uh, uh, which would first propound that there is no object at all. So, in that, in those cases, we cannot even talk about any objective basis of error at all. So, one such theory is, you know, propounded by Shunyavadin, it's called Asatkhyati. Uh, where you know it is believed that uh, you know the object uh, almost as if uh, uh, doesn't exist, uh, not so much in its material sense, uh, though sort of you know, this is something that would be stated later on by the Vijnanvadin, uh, you know, a particular group, a particular group of Vijnanvadin Buddhists. Uh, but you know, Shunyavadin uh, is basically interested in saying that uh, the object concerned doesn't have any nature at all. So the question of uh, you know some sort of the givenness, the objective givenness of uh, the 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 object doesn't arise at all. Uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, like less to speak of uh, what could be wrong in the presentation. So, there could be such theories as well. Similarly, idealist theories would also, you know, like uh, sort of theorize the matter in a certain way that there is something wrong only in the conceptualization part uh, of, of our consciousness. So, since consciousness is the only reality, uh, so, you know, uh, so like any kind of sankalpa and vikalpa, are uh, tantamount to error except that some of them uh, may have more practical value than certain others. Now, having understood, uh, you know, uh, like uh, why sort of theorizing errors is important and uh, and, and sort of, uh, and even before theorizing, uh, why it is important for us to understand uh, what could be different types of errors and uh, how we could uh, categorize uh, different uh, uh, what could be the ways of classifying different kind of errors? What could be the ways of categorizing 
uh, different kinds of errors uh, uh, you know sort of uh, we, we could we could kind of uh, proceed in the direction of uh, understanding these issues so uh, last time we would remember that uh, we had spoken uh, on on uh, jayanta and shridhara and uh, and we had talked about we had uh, we had uh, sort of uh, concluded by talking about shridhara who conceptualizes uh, the same distinction meaning the distinction uh, you know sort of uh, between different kind of errors in a slightly different way uh, he categorizes the peripherally excited errors into nirvikalpaka and cervicalpaka uh, the former according to him is due to malfunction of the peripheral sense organs and therefore are presentative in character for example yellow corn shell uh, uh, so we, we we have already talked about it so it's, it's not necessary to you know sort of discuss it further the latter type is representative of some object before us say for example snake rope so there uh, you know this is cervical pica type and it's uh, you know put under uh, the 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 category of cervical pica because there is an actual uh, sort of uh, you know object our cognition is representative of some actual object before us so which is you know sort of signified by snake and rope example so we are discussing shridhara only to remind ourselves only to you know connect the thread of our present lecture with the previous one uh now moving f- away from there uh so uh, uh so moving away from there we can talk about uh, you know now yet another kind of a distinction uh, yet another basis of distinction between different kind of errors uh, so erroneous cognitions uh, may also be classified as sopadhik uh, uh you know that means uh, resulting from some adventitious adjunct or proximate con- contaminating influences upon the present sense datum the example here would be red crystal you know the example that i sort of uh, ju- that we just uh, looked at so the example of red crystal would be that you know there could be a crystal which uh, which is completely sort of uh, which is without color which is transparent but uh, you know would appear uh, would appear red if there is some some kind of a red object placed before it or say for example say for example you know if 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 uh, the container of water is is uh, is uh, you know of a certain color uh, if we view the water from the top it would appear as if the water the color of water you know is, is so if, say for example if if the water is uh, is is contained in an entirely sort of uh, uh, blue container which is blue from inside and blue from outside so there in that case if we look at uh, the water from the top it might seem to us as if it has some kind of a bluish liquid inside so such cases uh, so this is one of the bases on which uh, you know we could we could uh, uh, we could uh, sort of uh, uh, classify different errors so sopadhik would uh, you know refer to such kind of errors and neuropathic errors uh, you know i would be contrary of that uh, so you know uh, which could be understood by, by rope and snake example so uh, here uh, you know sort of a uh, uh, like uh, one object is understood completely as the other so there is no actual kind of a mixing up happening it's not that uh, sort of you know some kind of sort of uh, i mean we are not seeing some kind of a mix up of rope and snake uh, there's something you know that happens in the in in our uh, you know in our uh, sort of uh, in our cognition when we uh, view uh, a particular crystal as red so some kind of a mixing up of uh, you know ha- of of the two objects happens the attribute the actual attribute of the one object actually you know sort of uh, almost as if starts manifesting itself through the other object so that kind of uh, you know some kind of a mix up does not happen in 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 this in this case so uh, uh so here uh, you know uh, there is n- no so to speak ad- adventitious adjunct actually you know ad- adventitious conjunction so to speak actually happening between the two objects so this is why it's called nirupadhik so upadhi is uh, you know basically some kind of uh, attribution of property which is not the actual property of the other uh, object which is adventitious property 
So say for example, in Nayaikas would say that, uh, that Chetana consciousness is not an essential property of the soul. It is only an adventitious property depending upon certain conditions, uh, soul may or may not have consciousness. So uh, such, uh, such kind of properties which are not essential to an object but may come to it as an attribute depending upon conditions are called adventitious uh, you know, uh, 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 properties. So, uh, so similar so in Nirupadic uh, kind of uh, erroneous cognition this process does not take place. Uh, yet another way of classifying errors could be you know classifying them on the basis of causal efficiency. So causal efficiency is yet another criteria to classify different cases of error. Uh, but this uh, accordingly divide errors into two kinds. Uh, and what are these two kinds? These two kinds are samvadi and visamvadi respectively. So, uh, you know, Dharmakirti and Dharmotar who come uh, after Dignaga and comment upon uh, some of his important works, uh, uh, mainly uh, Nyaya Bindu. So, uh, Dharmakirti proclaims that when an error, as for example, the cognition of the ray of jewel resulting in the, possess in the possession of it leads to successful activity, it is called Samvadi and otherwise it is Visamvadi. So uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, as we would remember, earth uh, kriya karitva, uh, causal uh, efficacy uh, of uh, you know the, the object of cognition is uh, taken as the test of truth uh, by uh, by the nayikas, uh, and uh, Buddhists more or less agree with it, uh, accepting. Uh, you know, uh, except for the fact that uh, for them, you know, it only refers to practical utility uh, in case of an inferred judgment. So, from the point of view of Praman Vyavastha, uh, all inferences, uh, you know, fall into a different category of cognition altogether. And from Paramarthic point of view, sort of, you know, we don't want to sort of look at that uh, category of cognitions very seriously. So, so it is not so much as a test of truth, truth in the sense of uh, you know soteriological value. So it is more a test of uh, you know sort of uh, truth in the sense of utility of of an inferred judgment. So for Dharmakirti, uh, a samvadi kind of uh, you know uh, sort of, uh, uh, of of cognition would be where uh, we cognize a certain object and uh, we actually happen to sort of uh, get possession of it. Uh, uh, sort of uh, the problem here would be that at times uh, you know the, the the actual object cognized uh, may not be same as uh, you know sort of uh, the object uh, sort of that we that it leads to the possession of. Say for example, you know, we may be sort of appearing some kind of a shiny object uh, at some place, and that object may not be there, but by chance uh, there could be sort of you know some precious other object lying there. So, 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 but, but, like the, 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 those exceptions apart, this is how Dharmakirti would, uh, you know, sort of uh, tend to uh, classify these two different kind of uh, uh, erroneous cognition. Uh, so, when uh, uh, cognition does not lead to uh, the possession of uh, you know the object concerned and does not lead to successful activity, it's called visamvadi. So, you know the 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 the, the uh, the cognition here would not lead to uh, fruitful activity. So this is, uh, you know, sort of one more way of uh, classifying uh, different cognitions. Uh, so uh, also, uh, very importantly, yet another way of, uh, you know, classifying different kind of erroneous cognitions could be on the basis of time length they exist for. So, on the basis of length of time for which errors continue to exist, they may be divided into mainly two types, uh, namely uh, timeless, uh, meaning anadi, without beginning, 
uh, uh, and uh, 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 so like uh, uh, example you know, of such uh, such kind of uh, uh, timeless uh, uh, error would be uh, apparent plurality of the world and temporal uh, and uh, opposed to it would be uh, you know temporal uh, kind of uh, errors which exist only for a definite period so say for example you know i mean th th this kind of distinction is uh, very important from the point of view of uh, advaitins and uh, there is a good amount of discussion in in brahm sutra bhashya uh, you know bhashya of brahm sutras by shankara so there is there some amount of uh, sort of very good discussion around uh, this topic so uh, there could be so you know uh, the apparent plurality of the world is some kind of uh, you know error which is timeless in nature uh, as soon as uh, sort of you know we are, when we are born and as we grow we are you know we are trained to look at uh, different objects as uh, you know as as having uh, uh, you know as as having different objective bases so chairs are chairs tables are tables and chairs are not tables and tables are not chairs and so on and so forth so there is a there's differentia uh, between uh, objects so uh, but uh, his philosophy is that of uh, you know uh, non dualism his philosophy propounds non differentiation uh, you know uh, in, in the nature of the world so uh, but uh, this you know this cognition of plurality in the world as if there was not one but several in the world uh, that cognition that kind of cognition is anadi this is you know how we have been always seeing the world we have been seeing the world as comprising of uh, uh, as uh, as uh, you know housing different types of objects so this is uh, uh, some kind of an anadi uh, kind of error which e which you know uh, sort of uh, uh, seems uh, incorrigible in the sense that uh, we may sort of uh, like uh, remove our ignorance and we may have ultimately this understanding that all uh, you know basically at the at the end uh, is is ultimately is is uh, you know a manifestation of brahman but even after knowing it the world would pres would keep presenting itself uh, as if it were plural so there would be no difference you know in our way of looking at it in the sense that you know this is appearance wouldn't stop uh, i mean its objective appearance would would uh, continue to exist in the same way so say for example you know for for a uh, sort of uh, for uh, a scientist uh, you know who 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 is who's doing research on quantum mechanics even if we know uh that everything is composed ultimately of the same stuff of the same subatomic particles yet uh you know we continue to look at them uh, look at the objects composed of them as if they had they they were different as if they had different objective bases whereas uh, other uh, you know kind of errors like snake rope uh these are temporary in nature so the moment uh, sort of you know we have the correct conditions of cognizing uh, say for example uh, the moment we have uh, proper lighting at the place where uh, you know uh, rope is uh, placed uh, the 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 cognition stands corrected as soon as uh, the the objective conditions are in place uh, the error the erroneous cognition ceases uh to exist so uh there could all of the, the errors could also be uh, divided on the basis of length of time they exist for and they could be you know from that point of view they could be a uh, timeless in nature uh, or or uh, you know another kind could be there could be the you know they they could exist for a definite period of time so but you know out of these two types of uh of of uh, errors that are theorized that are pointed towards by the advaita especially so between these two uh, the anadi type is more important for discussion from the point of view of advaita philosophy anadi type of error includes cases of what has been termed as avabhasa it is a type of error that is of an abiding nature in the sense that content of perception here remains the same along with its cognition uh, which means basically what it means to say is that it continues to exist despite the corrective cognition 
So another example, you know, more commonsensical example to understand it is that uh, that uh, you know uh, even now, now sort of in our present situation, we know that uh, uh, sun doesn't move around the Earth. Uh, it is actually the Earth uh, as a planet which is moving around the sun. We are taught this, uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of uh, soon, uh, soon after we are out of our primary classes, we have known it for, uh, you know, enough length of time yet. Uh, where, you know, in our judgment, uh, sort of, uh, we still say sun rises in the sea east and sets in the west. Uh, now, despite the fact that sun is actually neither rising nor setting, sun is always where it is, uh, we continue, so to speak, uh, talk about it in a way as if, uh, you know, it were moving because this is how it continues to appear before us. So, uh, this, you know, such kind of appearances are anadi in nature. Uh, so, so, you know, has always been appearing like this. And even, our, you know, when uh, the knowledge dawns upon us, even when we know that sun is actually not moving, uh, even after knowing this, we continue to form judgments, uh, uh, you know, uh, as if, as if the actual object of movement is sun. So, uh, you know, such kind of uh, errors or, you know, could be corrected only uh, uh, in our understanding. We may have a correct understanding of what's going on. Nothing needs to be corrected here. Our cognitive apparatus is perfectly in shape. It's not that, uh, you know, sort of like in conscious example, it's not that we we start, uh, you know, the, the, the sun starts appearing to as if, is, uh, as if it is it is yellow in color uh, neither is uh, there any uh, problem in the presentation of the sun it's not that uh, you know all of a sudden something uh, sort of uh, uh, you know some some kind of a contamination in the presentation because of something proximate to it uh, you know that it starts appearing red in color so there is nothing of that type uh, of of uh, problem occurring here so uh, here uh, the problem is just the way is in just the way we understand it uh, you know the moment we know that plurality uh, sort of makes its appearance uh, only because of wrong understanding of the world. The moment we know it, uh, you know, uh, and the move, sort of the moment we know it, uh, we know somewhere at the back of our mind that uh, plurality is only apparent in nature. We know that ultimately uh, the substratum, the adhishthan, of all this plurality, plurality is the same, which is, uh, you know, namely Brahman. So, despite that knowledge, uh, the world keeps on appearing to us, uh, you know, uh, in the same way, uh, despite having knowledge. So, knowledge here, so to speak, does not, uh, you know, sort of correct anything in the cognitive apparatus or in the objective basis of the error. This is why uh, sort of, you know, anadi uh, type of error is, is a very different way of, uh, you know, theorizing uh, uh, error uh, in, the, in the first place. Now, uh, there may be yet another way of looking at the cases of error. There could be appearances that could be corrected by changing our perspective, vantage point or frame of reference. Now, in such cases, sublation of the error immediately happens uh, the moment we change our perspective. The example would be parallax, uh, bent stick in water, conch, yellow conch shell. So, uh, you know, th th there are cases where uh, the you know the problem occurs because of certain perspectives. So, say for example, in the case of parallax, uh, are where uh, sort of you know uh, certain thing appears to us in a certain way because of the angle through which we are looking at the object. The moment we change the angle of seeing, uh, the actual nature of uh, object becomes uh, you know clear to us. Also, you know, there could be sort of there, there are other kind of uh, errors also discussed. Say, for example, if we are uh, in a moving train, things appear as if they are moving to us. If we are taking a boat ride, uh, the, 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 the shore, uh, you know, the shore of the river, which is not moving, uh, appears as if it is moving. 
So, or alternatively, sort of, uh, if if our train is, if you are sitting in a train and the adjacent train starts moving, we have a strong feeling as if it is our train that is moving, not the adjacent one. So, such cases of errors, uh, you know, are are sort of. Uh, are uh, the kind of errors which can which are based upon our sort of uh, you know uh, which are which are which can be immediately corrected the basis of which is our perspective or vantage point or frame of reference the moment we change our uh, sort of frame of reference uh, you know the the the, the the uh, error would uh, stand corrected. Uh, uh, on the other hand, there could be experienced objects that would not change their given appearance despite our knowledge of the real. In such cases, sublation uh, never happens or the fact, uh, in other words, does not change per se. The fact of the situation does not change per se even after we have the knowledge of the true nature of the object concerned. So, it brings us back to the same kind of example. We know that uh, sun is not moving anywhere. Despite that, uh, we continue to sort of say that sun is moving in the east and uh, setting in the west. So, uh, these are uh, different uh, sort of set of, uh, of, uh, of uh, error erroneous cognition. Now, according to Advaitins, Adhyasa is the main point of Vipriya. So, you know, they want to analyze uh, the er erroneous cognitions mainly from the point of view of what they call Adhyasa. Uh, Adhyasa is the main point of Vipriya and having a proper understanding of its genesis uh, or way of its functioning uh, uh, is of key importance in the removal of ignorance, which is the main cause of bondage. Therefore, understanding of vipriya or error is of central importance in the Advaitin soteriology. Uh, uh, further than that, uh, in that context, uh, you know, first of all, let, let, let's try and understand the term adhyasa. So we'll have a very brief discussion here because it's a very sort of, uh, I mean, it's, 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 uh, uh, adhyasa is uh, one of the key issues, is one of the key notions in Advaitin philosophy. If we, if we understand uh, what Shankara means by adhyasa, then uh, half the job, you know, sort of regarding understanding the Advaitin position would be done. So, that is a subject matter of, uh, of a separate lecture. So, but, but you know, Adhyasa very broadly speaking means, uh, you know, projecting something uh, on to something else. So, the, you know, there is something called Adhishthana, the, 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 the sort of substratum which is uh, real, but something else is projected onto that substratum. Actually, you know, we could also understand it from the point of view of, uh, you know, there is this, there's uh, if we recall, uh, you know, different case endings uh, uh, in in in, uh, in in Sanskrit, uh, then you know the Saptami Vibhakti, which uh, stands for uh, Adhikaran, which is called Adhikaran. So the word Adhyas can be rooted back to that. Now the Adhikaran, the, you know, refers to uh, some kind of sort of uh, you know substratum on which something else lies. Uh, you know, so Adhikaran is used in the sense of in or on or upon. So there is some substratum on which something else lies. So uh, Adhyasa similarly, you know, so this root uh, Adhi, uh, you know, which is used in Adhikaran, Adhyasa, Adhyarop, uh, basically uh, refers to this sense. So, uh, uh, the term Adhyasa, you know, sort of refers to some kind of an Adhyarop, Adhyarop meaning uh, projecting something, some kind of an attribute, some or it could be an attribute, it could be sort of uh, something else, projecting something onto something else, which so to speak covers up the real nature uh, of, of uh, the object concerned, which covers up the real nature of the Adhishthana. Uh, the actual, you know, object concerned, the actual substance concerned. Now, uh, Adhyasa has been uh, divided by Shankar uh, into several types. We'll have a quick look at uh, some of these types. So, uh, and you know, the, 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 there is some good amount of discussion on this in, in Brahm Sutra Bhashya. So, first type of uh, Adhyasa could be Swarup Adhyasa which is very often translated as uh, integral super superimposition where you know sort of uh, uh, where somebody uh, thinks of 
uh, you know something as having a different swarupa as having a different nature altogether so say for example you know like somebody saying i am a man so if you identify yourself completely with your gender uh, then you know you are cov- sort of you you, you are uh, covering up you know you are sort of uh, you you are thinking of uh, you know your being man as your only swarupa as as you know your being only nature so as a matter of fact you know, it's all it also reminds us of satra who would say that uh, sort of you know when we when we uh, identify ourselves with just one of the possibilities then it's a case of bad faith so you know we are not recognizing the other possibilities but so that's a very peripheral kind of a similarity uh, but you know, the idea here is being mistaken about the actual nature the actual nature of one thing is superimposed upon the other so the real nature of uh, you know i uh, or atman is that of brahman but you know we think of uh, the swarup of uh, you know i as not atma but you know so ru uh, is the roop being as if uh, you know somebody is uh, being man or a woman uh and you know it could also be pointed out here that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, different these different types of uh, adhyasas as enumerated are not mutually exclusive as a matter of fact some of them you know are used synonymously as well and now looking at the other one sansarg adhyasa uh, this involves identification with what is only contingently attached to us so say for example you know, somebody is sort of uh, thinking of one's body the shape of one's body uh, which is you know contingently attached to us uh, as uh, you know as our actual nature so if people saying i'm lean i'm fat etc so in such cases uh you know the, the, the like would it would involve dharma adhyasa or sansarg adhyasa as matter of fact dharma adhyasa and sansarg adhyasa uh, are used uh, as synonymous terms by some of the scholars ahari uh, adhyasa uh, which is yet another type of adhyasa is translated as purposive or provisional superimposition so uh, this involves symbolic idol worship uh, pratikopasana pratika upasana uh, advocated in the shastras so some of the shastras uh, you know advocate uh, the upasana the worship of a symbolic idol say for example the idol of vishnu so we we know that uh, shankara was uh, you know uh, instrumental in 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 uh, and uh, you know the foundation and and building of several of these uh, uh, mathas uh, including uh, including uh, some of the famous uh, uh, you know shrines uh, so uh, here uh, you know even if uh, we know that a particular you know slab of stone uh, is sort of uh, is is basically in substance is stone but we look at it as uh, you know as a symbolic of a god so such uh, you know so this, this is a kind of a deliberate adhyasa knowing uh, the the actual nature we yet uh for uh, you know the purpose of worship we project uh, you know some other nature onto it uh yet another one is uh, dharma adhyasa as pointed out earlier several scholars uh, you know use it synonymously with uh, with uh, sansarg adhyasa uh, so here the dharma of something other than the soul like body is taken to be the very nature of the atma the attributes of anatma non soul are superimposed upon atma atma uh, you know is of the nature of brahman so so you know the mahavakya tatva masi basically refers to uh, identification of atman with the brahman so the self or the soul is of the nature of brahman there is at the ultimate level no plurality about it uh, you know but this plurality is advocated uh, by sankhya among others this is why sankhya is viewed as the pradhan mal the main opponent uh, in shankara's uh, brahma sutra bhashya so here in the case of uh, in the case of dharma adhyasa mutually the dharmas are confused and atma becomes uh, satya meaning uh, sort of reality we look at it uh, becomes in the sense of it is viewed as a reality a reality enjoyed by the deha because being pervades every cell and particle of everything that we see but here only the pure existence the is part of the judgment is the reality uh, but instead of that uh, the body which is you know in, in sort of which is one of the sort of uh, which is because of its pro- 
proximity is taken as the reality of our being so to speak. Uh, yet another type of uh, dhyasa is artha dhyasa. Uh, it means a mix up, uh, you know, there is some kind of a mix up between the objects are there is there. Uh, and after inquiry and the knowledge of what is there, the artha disappears. So here what happens is like one artha, one object is sort of mistaken for the other. Is, uh, say for example, snake, a uh, rope is uh, mistaken for, uh, for the rope. Uh, whereas in Jnana Adhyasa, which is the next type of Adhyasa, uh, Adhyasa is only in the knowledge. Uh, so, uh, uh, like you know, the, our knowledge that the blue sky is not blue. We know that uh, sort of you know the sky is basically uh, of no color at all. But yet, uh, you know, sort of we we think of sky as blue. So here, uh, the problem is only in our knowledge of uh, you know of the thing. So the uh, adhyasa projection happens only at the level of judgment uh, and at no other level. Uh, so e e sort of even even when we correct it in our judgment, it continues to uh, exist. Uh, so the next one, the last one is dharma adhyasa. Here, we don't talk about dharma, uh, meaning the attribute, but the dharmi the thing of which it is an attribute. So here we are mistaken about uh, the nature of the dharmi uh, itself. So you know like sort of uh, it would involve the cases of uh, defining oneself as uh, sort of you know, somebody saying I am a human being. Uh, it refers to the case of superimposition where one dharmi is superimposed upon uh, another one. So these are uh, very very broad categorization of different types of adhyasa. Uh, of course, you know dhyasa is a very large topic which could be sort of uh, discussed in a separate lecture. But you know very broadly speaking, since uh, uh, mistaken cognition is of huge importance, uh, you know seeing of plurality though according to them none exists is of huge importance in Advaita philosophy. This is why if we try to look at uh, uh, why according to them wrong cognition of vipri happens at all. So uh, we would uh, conclude our lecture uh, here today and we in our uh, lectures to come we would talk about different uh, theories of error as propounded by different schools. So uh, there are about 10 or 10 of them all together. We will try to sort of cover them, uh, uh, cover as many of them as possible in our uh, sort of next three or four lectures. So we will conclude here. Thank you. for today.